Hello, season four, friends. Well, welcome. Season three has taken over. <laughs> it is us today. Instead of one, you get what? What? Six of us. <laughs> Oh, awesome bonuses. Hello, guys. Well, welcome. It is episode three. You are starting week three, and season three is taking over. And so we are thrilled and honored to um, greet you today and hear all your successes and hear your mm, standings, which is always exciting. So we are, season three is thrilled to be here with you guys today. And um, we have some amazing people who are going to speak from their heart. And we cannot wait to share with you, but there's something we got to do first. <gasps> we got some standings. <laughs> so I'm, I know I'm so excited. So... Um, in total in one week 10 people 30.8 pounds as a group oh my gosh that awesome. is so amazing you guys rock yes <laughs> you should all be so so proud so proud guys but in total two weeks you guys this is incredible in two weeks you guys have lost 81.6 pounds total. That's amazing. That is so fantastic, guys. I just get to be the host. I love these people who are going to share today because as much as I could just talk, <laughs> um, we have four people from season three that want to share their heart. And tonight's topic is talking about the power of the tongue. Because the tongue is, you know what? I, I'll have to double check, but I'm pretty sure it's the strongest muscle in the body. That's what I've heard. Mm. And it can do so much good. <laughs> it can do so much damage. It's a powerful, it's not just the strongest, it is powerful. And so I have the honor of for, um, introducing some amazing people with wonderful words to share with you guys tonight about the power of the tongue. And um, I hope that you take to heart what they have to say, because it's going to be life-changing. Because I know that when I was taught this, it helped me change so many things about what I say to myself and what I say to other people and how we speak to each other. So I would like to introduce first my amazing and lovely and beautiful and another early riser, right, Tammy? Woohoo! <laughs> She and I are often up really early yeah. sometimes, and we're an hour away. So sometimes I exercise with her and it's like, I'm up at four o'clock in the morning to exercise with her, but it's worth it. So I do it once a week. <laughs> so my lovely Tammy. Thank you so much, Krista Joy. It is such a pleasure that yes, we do get up early and we do get to work out. And, you know, tonight we're going to be talking about something that is so powerful is the power of the tongue. And one of the things that I love about you, Krista Joy, you have exemplified that to our group with the ton of weight that you have lost and with the words that you have spoken, that you have amplified that. And tonight, we're going to demonstrate what you have showed all of us, not only just you, but I will say everybody with the consistency, with the words that you speak and the things that you say. And so I get a chance to talk to all of you all. 
about the power of your tongue. And this is dear to me. And I hope that you will hear what I have to say, that it will come through this Zoom as I am sitting in front of you. So because I'm so visual, I like to show things so that you can get it as we articulate the power of your tongue. So let me share the power of your tongue. See, I am so visual. <laughs> I have to show you things, what your tongue look like when it has power to it. When it has power, and it means the word that often invokes an emotion, respond to positive or negative in the target audience, leading to a desired outcome. How did that happen? You can either have praise on your tongue or you can have discouragement on your tongue. You can have life on your tongue or death. You can either have fear or faith. You can have hope or the hopeless. You can either build up or you can tear down. You can either have truth or you can have life. What do you mean, Tammy? What do you mean about all of those things that you're telling me? What did that mean to me in the process of losing weight? What did that mean to me that I eat what I am told to eat? What did that mean? What do all that mean? See, we know the power of your tongue controls. It is connected to your brain. And I want to begin to show you to get a visual. So when you begin to speak, I want you to think of these words, praise, that you want to say praise about where you want to go. You want to speak life over your situation when it comes to you eating the right food and eating out of the container or whichever if you do the calories. You want to have faith that you can get through, that you can drink your gallon of water, that you can lose your weight. It doesn't matter what the scale looks like, but you can speak to the scale. You can speak to what you want to happen. You can have hope in the midst of this and not have hopeless because it will try to creep up during this process. You want to make sure you say words to build you up and not to tear you down through this process. The power of your tongue and how it works, I want you to get this in your mind because I want you to see how your tongue is connected to your brain and how it controls your brain. When your tongue transmitted to the brain, they guide the nervous system to grow in a certain direction. And I wanted you to visually see this. So when you begin to start speaking and when you get into your group and when things are happening, it may not go the way that you want to go. You want to have words that you want to speak because you know that it is leading to your brain and to your emotion and to your soul and to how you, your mind. Last, I want to say to you, what you tell yourself every day will lift you up or tear you down. What you can, you, you can change your world by changing your words. You can speak life to a situation. You can speak life to your stomach. You can speak life to your mind. You can speak life to your whole entire body and your body will transform. Your words are important. It is so important because let me tell you, when I began to start on my journey of losing weight, I began to speak and writing affirmations and speaking to my, to my stomach, my belly. And now my belly has transformed to what I wanted to see. And what I want to say to you tonight, life and death is in the power of your tongue and you have the power to control your life and to dictate your life you have the power to drive that ship to wherever it needs to go because it's the smallest thing but it's the most powerful thing that you can do anything and speak and bring life 
to any situation. So all I want to say to you tonight, make sure your word speaks exactly what your vision, what your vision is for your body. Thank you so much. That was fabulous, Tammy. And thank you for those great uh, visuals. I, oh, get that tongue on fire in my head. Oh, I love it. So thank you, Tammy, for those words. Um, I would like to introduce um, one of the boys we allowed into the group for tonight, um, but he's also a fellow Minnesotan, just like me. We get to be in the gold together. Um, Tonight, I would like you to hear um, Bryce, because Bryce has some fabulous words um, and great things to share with you about uh, more about the power of the tongue and how life and death is in the tongue. So take away, Bryce. Okay. Um, so when I heard that this was going to be the topic that we got to speak on, um, the first thing that popped into my mind is just how the like Tammy was saying the tongue steers the rest of the your um, interactions so like if you have a positive attitude of, and a positive you know tongue it you're you're going to lead towards positivity um, it's you know it's almost impossible to have a negative tongue but a positive outlook or a positive outcome if if you're speaking negativity into your life uh, and then that just kind of led me to a fun little anecdote um, that it reminded me of when my cousins and I would get together over uh, Thanksgiving when we were uh, younger uh, the, there was a water park at the place that uh, we would stay and they had a little uh, circular pool that you could you know get a current going in one direction with a little bit of work uh, and then we would always you know have fun trying to walk against that current we had just built um, and that just popped into my head because, you know, you can get your current going one direction with, with your words and how you're, th your, um, you know, the positivity you have or the negativity you have. But then, you know, if you start getting that current going, it's real hard to turn around and start walking against that current you've got going. Um, so the, the power of the, the positivity or the negativity, that duality that the tongue carries uh, is is huge and make sure that uh, you know the direction your current going is is the direction you want to be going uh, because it's real hard to, to reverse it if it isn't but you know you can reverse it it just it takes much more effort um, and then this was something I found while I was looking at about uh, you know the tongue and it really fit and stuck out to me um, the power in your tongue is ruled by your choice. Humans are the only creatures that have the ability to choose their words. The choice is yours. Are you going to let your tongue lift you and those around you up uh, and encourage those you come across? Or are you going to drag yourself and those around you down? Thank you, Bryce. That was a great image. Thank you. I really appreciate that. Um, so. I would love to introduce my beautiful, lovely snowbird. Um, we have <laughs> we have Cher. She is our Canadian, which is awesome. And I love I love I love Cher. She is uh, such a sweet joy, and she um, has such a gentle spirit. And I I cannot wait to hear what you have to share with us tonight. So, here is Cher. Hey, hi, everybody. So I thought that I would do something a little bit different. I'm actually, um, in addition to being a prof, I am a blogger and I'm starting a podcast. So I was working on a blog post and it's called The Stories We Tell Ourselves. And I thought that I would read my rough draft to you and let, and you can let me know what you think. But remember, I'm a human being with feelings. So no, I'm just teasing. Um, so yeah, so this is just a draft of something I'm kind of putting together. Um, the stories we tell ourselves. Somewhere along the line, I started to believe that I was no longer worth it. There wasn't an exact moment that I realized that I actually believed that about myself. I didn't experience a profound epiphany 
Instead, the belief came in little droplets, slowly seeping into my internal landscape and becoming really, really comfortable there. I'm not even sure I was aware that this was the narrative that I created, the narrative that I was gonna fail again, that this is all I would ever become, that I wasn't strong enough to make any real change in my life and that I was undeserving of my dreams because at the end of the day, I wasn't really worth the effort. And to the outside world, I projected happiness. I was fearless, I was tenacious, I led with confidence, but what was going on inside of me was an entirely different story. As time passed, the little droplets that once slowly and silently seeped into the deepest part of me evolved into a fog, basically a fog that a, a obscured the very essence of who I was. And at the time, I had no idea how toxic my narrative was, that inner narrative that I was telling myself, and that it was actually keeping me in a place of fear and a place of uncertainty. The story that I was telling myself, the words that I was using were literally becoming part of my identity. And over time, it was really easy and really, really convenient for me to give up and to just stop. And I came to accept the fact that I was gonna just remain completely stagnant. I think that the internal stories that we, we create have a profound effect and impact on how we view ourselves, how we view others, and how we view the world around us. They shape our perceptions and our perspectives in ways that we're not even sometimes aware of. We trust our stories, we internalize them, and they become our truth. To be perfectly honest though, I never really considered that there could be another side to my story. A story where I didn't give up, a story where I kept going, a story where I threw caution to the wind and ran with passion and fervor in the direction of my dreams. I finally came to the uncomfortable realization that my story, the one that I created, was keeping me stuck, stuck in a place that wasn't serving me, I wasn't reaching my potential, and worst of all, I knew of it. When I realized how this narrative was keeping me stuck, when I came to that realization, a desire began to stir inside of me and an intense yearning to create another story, a new story, found a place in my heart. You see, stories can always start again. They don't have to remain static. They can evolve and they can take on new life and they can inspire us to ultimately do really incredible things. The moment I realized that I was the author of my own story and that my story could be anything that I wanted it to be, everything changed. The fog lifted, the droplets slowed to a stop and I took my power back. I resurrected a character one that I had long forgotten. She was and continues to be a woman with dreams, a seeker of inspiration, and a believer that anything is possible. And with every pound that I lose, I feel this character come alive. And this time, she's not giving up. Thank you for sharing that. That was wow. truly from your heart and very beautiful. And Aww. it really feels like very share. So thank you. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Well, we have one more guest um, to share with us tonight, and I'm more than thrilled that you get to hear from Abby. She is an amazing woman. She's a beautiful person inside and out. She's a very wise person, very joyful. And um, I know that she will have some great takeaways for you tonight and um, help you with your tongue on this journey because it's a big piece of this journey. So Abby, it's your turn. I wanna to add to this in addition to, um, Tammy touched on very thoroughly and I so appreciated those visuals. 
the power of the tongue that can give life or death, basically. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. That's been written to us in the best book ever, 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 full of truth. And um, Tammy, thank you for those visuals. Building ourselves up instead of tearing ourselves down can be somewhat of a journey. So that's kind of what we're going to tap into is how do we identify where we're speaking death and we need to actually change it to life. So um, Bryce, thank you for pointing out the fact that we get to choose. We have the opportunity to choose our words and the seeds that we plant. So obviously the seeds that we plant is what's going to grow. Thank you for pointing that out. It ties right in and share your tiny droplets of the thoughts that build our belief system. That is so powerful. So, so very powerful. So um, as we really change this over to, okay, moving forward, how does this connect with even more than what we're speaking over ourselves? I think it can tie into how we, we speak about our journey. So um, even people are going to respond differently to your journey, depending on how you talk about it. Mm -hmm. So I'll give you an example. Say you're at a family dinner and you've got food pushers, right? Thank you, Paula, for that. I love that. You've got food pushers, right? And you say, oh man, I can't have that. They're going to try to convince you to have it, right? Or instead, if you go at it from a different mindset and you're confident in it and you're joyful in it and you're enjoying the journey and they say, oh, hey, why don't you have some of this pie? And you say, no, thank you, but I've already got a bowl of fruit because you're already planning. So you've already got that set aside. They're probably not going to try to convince you otherwise because they see you're happy in your decision. Mm -hmm. So if you think about your don'ts, um, Okay, raise your hand if you've ever trained a child or an animal. Can you guys just raise your hand? Okay, so quite a few of you guys. Okay, we'll be able to identify here. So let's picture yourself. You might have to close your eyes. Nobody can see you if you close your eyes, by the way. Um, if you are a school teacher and you're getting ready to walk out into the hallway with a classroom full of energetic kids and you're walking past test takers and you have got to have them quiet. And you've got like 30 of them and one of you. Krista Joy, you can relate, I know. And you tell the kids, do not run in that hallway and do not talk. Do you understand me? And you set off on your journey. What did you just leave those kids thinking about? Running and talking, right? But if you change it, okay, so backtrack. We're imagining this again. You're getting ready to walk on into the hallway with a group of kids. You've got a whole classroom full and you need them to be quiet. And you tell them what to do. Okay, we're all going to hold a bubble in our mouth. Like, don't let it escape. You can breathe through your nose, but don't let that bubble escape. And then you're going to walk. Show me how a king or a queen walk. And you're walking down the elementary school before you know it, you're there, right? And you just set everyone up for success. So we want to encourage you to set yourselves up for success, even with your talk and with your thoughts. Instead of, I don't get to have that pizza. Think of, I do get to have, plug in whatever your favorite food is. I love broccoli. I love it. Love it, love it, love it. So it might sound crazy if you say, I can't have pizza, but I can have broccoli. So I think one thing that will really benefit all of us on this journey is if we start changing, exchanging our can'ts or don't do's for our to do's. Well, friends, now it's time to hear from you guys. Tonight's question is, how are we going to use your tongue and the power of the tongue to help you, one, achieve your goals? What do you need to change? What do you need to do more of? And how can you use the power of the tongue to help other teammates achieve their goals? The first thing I'm gonna do is 
um, to help myself is not only I'm very cautious about what I speak out of my mouth as far as the life and death side of things go, but it's the mental things that happen in my mind. So it's not only what comes out of my mouth, but it's even taking those thoughts captive in my head. Um, I'm really good about doing that, but focusing more on when they are coming in, squashing them right away and not letting them fester and stir. Um, and even for changing it, uh, for changing some of the words that do come out of my mouth, um, it's focusing on the positive. So even just like these last couple of weeks of how, how flexible I have been able to be. So Carmen mentioned last week, what are the, what are the things from the first week? And that was very powerful because I've been focusing on that, like, okay, look at the progress that I've made. So continuing to, to focus on the things that are working and stay away from the negatives. I need to change my mindset. I need to change my, my, my mindset, just like what Ms. Um, Jennifer Ratchford said. Um, I feel a lot of, not feel, I hear in my, in my mind, the negative. Um, sometimes when I hear how well these other ladies are doing, they're so amazing. I'm just like, wow, I need to, I need to work harder. Um, I'm going to change it by changing these, um, thoughts. by just refocusing and remembering who I am and who I have around me, um, to, to support, to support me. Hello, everybody. Um, for me, it has been a huge mindset. Um, I came in with a mindset and then, what a weekend I got thrown a huge curveball um for those of you who don't know I found out I was pregnant um which was a total shock and um so that for like three or four days I was just internally processing and going sorry I'm gonna cry going down a lot of you know every pregnancy I've gained blah 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 this isn't gonna work and so then I kind of vocalized that and it was not the best because that's what I'm, you know, thinking. And I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to focus on my sprout and focus on, you know, the two pounds a week. It's the best race for me. You know, originally I'm like, I'm going to win this. I'm going to be number one. And, and I know like right now I'm like, I'm just, you know, um, going through all that as far as like you know feeling uh bloated and but then I was like so last week I got on the scale and it was like zero and that whole week I had been doing this and when we had to weigh in it was actually higher than my starting weight so that was frustrating so today sprout is you know it was three point whatever four pounds lower than my starting weight and I'm just really sh trying to shift the internal mindset of I'm doing this for my health, no matter what. And if it takes me a little bit longer, it takes me a little bit longer. Um, sorry, I'm just, you know, emotional. But um, the biggest thing I try to do is offer encouragement. Um, and I just really have determined to bring Sprouts forth um, and just keeping focus on the Sprouts and not where the mind wants to take you. <laughs> All right. So um, for me, something I heard Carmen say is um, say it with your mouth, even before your mind actually believes it, All right, Like speak it, even when deep down, you don't really believe it yet. Um, so for me, um, I found myself saying um, the food part's been pretty easy, but it's the exercise. <laughs> I like the workouts. So I, uh, you know, I found myself saying like, I hate this. Um, oh my God, I got to work out, you know, like saying those negative things. And, um, so that's, that's what I need to change. That's what I'm going to change is stop saying that I hate the workout. Stop saying, um, you know, that I'm dreading the exercise because, um, because words are seeds, right? So, um, so yeah, so that was my a big takeaway from Carmen when she said, you know, say it anyway, say it, speak it, um, regardless of whether you even believe it yet, um, because you will eventually, you will believe it if you keep speaking it. Um, 
So, um, and, you know, to focus on how much I've lost so far, instead of focusing on where I want to go, like, I mean, focus on where I want to go, but, but not no comparison and, um, you know, focusing on how far I've come instead of how far I still have to go. Let's see. Um, I am often my own worst enemy. Um, when it, it comes to words, um, I usually feel that when someone first meets me, I have a very self-deprecating sense of humor because I feel that when someone will meet me, they're automatically thinking something negative or wrong about me. So I'll make a, a, a joke about myself and, and just try and get it out there. And that is, that's totally wrong. Um, and I know that, and I am the worst person at taking compliments. Um, I automatically in my, in my head, I hear these, I call them foundational voices because it's actually voices from people from while I was growing up of things that they would say and um, already combating that right away. And those sure are fantastic. I'm like, yeah, yeah, are you sure you didn't mean a different Kristen? <laughs> but um, just one piece of advice that I've received within the last couple of months has been just really earth shattering for me. And I was advised to write all these negative thoughts down just write them all down on a piece of paper. And I'm like, well, now I feel yucky, really yucky, because they're all here and words in front of me. And then, and then this person told me, find a Bible verse that says just the opposite of that. So if someone, you know, says that, that you're, you're good for nothing, or, you know, just you're fearfully and wonderfully made, find a Bible verse. And anytime those things come up in your head, go back to this list and look at those Bible verses and commit them to heart. And that really has been an absolutely powerful tool, tool for me. And just having that, that inner tongue retrained and be still when I do receive the compliments um, that, I am, that I am worth it. Hey, what's up, guys? Okay, so <clears throat> I've thought about this, obviously, for a while now. And um, my first instincts tell me that I have some issues with food, especially food I really like, um, that I love. I almost can obsess over. And then when I'm around it, instead of just enjoying the um, willpower of not having it, I like kind of piss and moan a little bit and whine and like, oh, I, I hope you're liking that. I can't have any. So I would, I would say that that would be something that I really need to work on outwardly, something that actually comes out of my mouth. And I think in my mind, I think it's kind of funny because I like being the funny person, but it's really not helping me at all, especially up here. So that needs to stop. Like I was around the most amazing, fantastic homemade spaghetti ever this weekend. And um, people were just sitting right next to me, just eating it and saying how good it was and like slurping. <laughs> And I was just like, really? You like that? Is that good? And, oh, more garlic bread. Yeah, go ahead, have more. So I need to, I need to just congratulate them. And, um, and inwardly, um, thoughts wise, I, I have always my whole entire life surrounded myself with very strong personalities. I enjoy it. I, I am very attracted to very strong personalities. But what comes with that is they will tell you how it is. And I've taken on this crazy thing of just being like dumb, like I, thinking I'm a little dumber than everybody else. I can't get it. I'll never do it as good as them. So that personality will tell you how it is. And I seem to um, mess up here and there, not because I'm trying to, but they're when you're around them, they're quick to point out that you messed up. And then I'm like, yep, because I'm stupid or I'm dumb or I'm not as smart as you. Like, that's what goes through my head. And I keep reminding myself of that. So that definitely needs to stop. Um, OK, so to uh, some of the things that I need to continue doing, and I've been working on this for the past couple of years because there's a lot of emotional roots that um, you know, you, you adopt and they become a habit and you just have to really deal with all of those things. So um, I'm gonna continue to focus on the gain and not the gap. So that's um, how far I've come versus how far I have to go. So 
um, that's uh, really important to focus on. Uh, I'm Crystal, and I am, as Melissa calls, the skinny girl in the group. Um, and the skinny girl had a very rough start. And I had the pleasure, most of you are not going to know, now you all are going to know, to have a personal butt whooping from Carmen outside of the group. And not even just the wooden spoon, like the belt whooping from Carmen, the belt whooping. So hopefully it's been evident since the first week and Carmen's butt whooping, how that changed me in the group. Um, so I need to... Um, find when they have a problem, I just need to find some positive things in those problems. Um, just needed a reminder because I know all these things and I get, you know, sometimes it's just when it, there's just so many things that happened the first week with the food and the exercise. And here I am, they're like, oh, you're the best shape of everybody. And I'm laying on the floor and I can't even get up. I mean, like, yeah, this is looking great guys. So, you know, just trying to find the positive. And I am the superfood health guru person before it even started. So, my goal is to encourage these ladies with um, cooking tips that's going to make them love this food forever. Um, you know, this this has been um, a very interesting exercise for me to do um, because it's a couple things. One thing is I have, before I even started, just really changing the trajectory of my life by changing how I speak. And so, um, you know, the one, the one phrase that I learned here is that um, I can do... I can do hard things. Hello? Am I here? here? There we go. I can do hard things. And I think that that sticks with me in the workouts because I'm, I'm one that, that loves to work out. But um, these workouts are hard. Uh, but I love them, you know, because I know that every day I'm getting stronger. Every day I'm, I'm learning something new. So it, that, that encourages me. Uh, I also know that, um, you know, the other part, but even before this was always about that positive self-talk. So, you know, not, not that I'm feeling fat today, but I'm transitioning to, to skinny. And I think that's, you know, sometimes in, in the group, I think we do slip and I, I'm, I'm going to be the, I, I almost sent something the other day. Uh, I think somebody was talking about being fat and it's like, we can't even say that. Like what we, sh what we should be saying is I'm transitioning to skinny, you know, or, you know, if, if we're having a tough time with something, it always has to be positive self-talk. Um, because it, it, you know, when it, it's, it's one thing to kind of get it out. Right. And I think we all have those moments where we're, ha we're struggling with something we need to get it out, but right behind that it needs to be something even more positive, um, to really pick us all up because, you know, we're all, uh, in this, it, we are all in this to win it, whether, you know, what, what winning means to us is very different. But I think we're all in it to win it and we're going to win something for ourselves. And for me, I know uh, this is this is something life changing for me. And it's something that is really going to change not only the trajectory of of my life, but my children's life. So um, I'm going to try to explain this the best I can. I'm just. I'm a little bit overwhelmed in this group because I did not I did not recognize like really what I was getting into. All I knew knew for me personally, is I was praying for help. Um, I've always struggled with emotional eating, overeating, and just like secret eating. I'm talking for 20 plus years and I would lose the weight and then and gain it back. And I'm just realizing for me, being in this group and watching a lot of people who have been through first steps to success. And I went to my first well, it was my second training. I went to one many years ago. Um, is I this group is highlighting how negative my thoughts were, um, and I and I know where they stem from, but I'm seeing like how deep those roots are. And um, I was talking to my mentor a couple of weeks ago, and she just said something in it, kind of like almost slapped me and she said um you know those words are powerful that you speak to other people but it's time for you to believe them for yourself and once I knew that Carmen accepted my application I literally said like my game face is on so since I've started this journey I've been getting up early 
every morning and I come right to my office to write my food for the day because I don't want to think about my food anymore because I need the rest of my time and energy to fight the battle that's here because it's this is the battle that has kept me bound for like so many years and being in this Marco Polo group with these women I've kind of just been an audience like sitting back saying wow look how they speak wow look how they think wow look how they encourage one another and I just have to kind of be honest of where I'm at because um it almost highlighted like whoa I'm like negative Nancy and I I thought I was a positive person positive words, make a choice to find positiveness and speak positiveness. And I know people in my, my group already know this, but you know what? The choice is yours, right? Make it a great week or not, but the choice is yours. <laughs> you guys are amazing and you are doing amazing things. So, 